Good evening, everyone. This is a premium public video discussion. Second one in two days. It's a nice Christmas gift for you. The reason why I decided to do this premium public video is that there is a lot of chaos out there and the model chaos is, well, interesting to say the least. And I bet you thought that I was going to shift everything northward or southward or somewhere in between, depending on which model you want to follow. The GFS shifted, shifted way south. And then the European 18Z is shifting north. The NAM has shifted north and south. The HRR has shifted north and then south and then back north again. So there is a lot of volatility. And so, of course, a lot of people who are just following snow maps are saying, hey, why are you doing this? Why don't you do that? Let's take a step back and breathe. What is happening in this scenario? Okay, so we have Arctic air which you can see right here, starting to stream in, right? And we have our polar air that is getting pushed out behind our cold front. So you can see the Arctic air with the lower dew points starting to bleed into the region. Pretty much as forecast, and these temperatures are going to continue to fall and uh, fall pretty well by tomorrow morning, setting up the environment for our winter storm. Meanwhile, as you can see off to our west, we have our disturbance approaching. Now, again, this is not a scenario. When we take a look at our infrared satellite picture, and you know, more importantly, let's take a look at the upper level winds here. This is not a scenario of a major nor'easter. Okay, so if you're trying to forecast based on that aspect of it, yeah, it's it's not that at all. What you have here are shearing dynamics, stretching dynamics. Okay, and the question you have to ask yourself when you're looking at all the model data is what uh, in terms of the fundamentals have changed since this morning? Not much. Okay, uh, we have a little bit better handle on the warm air transport heading into eastern Pennsylvania. So we made some adjustments there, which I'll show you in the impact map. Um, but we haven't seen much change in the overall setup of this uh, whole storm set uh, environment. You have your Upper level low is starting to form here around the Canadian Maritimes with a nice deep trough. Your convergence and confluence is taking shape. Your high pressure system is starting to strengthen. The polar and Arctic air is starting to stream in. So all that's working out pretty much as expected. Back here is our disturbance with our warm air transport. Not much change in terms of the strength of that warm air transport. Uh, in terms of the jet streak, 850 millibar jet streak, pretty much as forecasted. So a lot has remained the same. Uh, in terms of the jet stream dynamics that we were talking about earlier, no change. Okay, you have the same setup here. Our upper level low forming, convergence confluence, high pressure system building in. You have your divergence here. You're having your stretching dynamics taking shape here. Notice how the uh, strong diffluence out here. So that means air is rapidly leaving this region. And you can see as a result of that, we go here, very strong rising motion. Okay, so that's in place. Nice ridge axis here over New England, which means your precipitation is going to get cut off pretty fast. If you're going to have all your strong lifting here, you have to have substance somewhere. So... If we're seeing more ice and sleet and freezing rain signal and less snow, thus this rapid drop off in southeastern Pennsylvania, there must be massive warming. Not really. Here we have 850 millibars, and this is the European guidance. And notice for Friday afternoon, Friday evening, here's 850 millibars, very much below freezing gradually warming but not so much a lot of cold air okay so maybe at 925 millibars maybe there's a lot of warming there there's obviously this warming nose happening not so much down in southern new jersey yeah around here not so much okay so what's going on here not happening at 925 millibars let's let's do 700 millibars Maybe we'll have massive warming here. But there's our warm air transport coming in on Saturday. But again, this is this is above where most of the precipitation profiles are set up. 
There's your warm nose, and it gets kind of pushed back because of the divergence, diffluence, and rising air until we get to Saturday morning. So you're seeing this kind of pushback, right? So what is happening in the atmosphere to cause this? Hmm. Well, I know. Let's take a look at the surface temperatures. Clearly, there must be massive warming there. So let's go to... Let's see here, we'll do temperatures, two meter temperatures, and this is the 18Z European guidance. And we could also look at other mild guidance too. But let's look at the overall theme here. Here we are Friday evening, well below freezing. There's our warming, okay? So here we are at 35. 32, freezing, freezing, freezing. So I'm not seeing massive warm air transport until I get all the way up to 700 millibars. Even then, you're still below freezing in, in most of the region. And by the time that 700 millibars really shows up here, most of your precipitation is done. Again, most of this event is in the overnight hours, especially at right 12 midnight, you're well below freezing in most of the region. By the time you get your warm air really dominating and you're at freezing, most of your precipitation done. Okay? So, you have this gradient. You have rapid rising. That means there's sinking air. What the model guidance is trying to show is, is trying to show the banding taking place here. And the reason why you're seeing the models jump all over the place, like, like, Skip, scotch hop and, and and just jumping around is because it puts that intense lifting at different locations. So, again, I was taught a long time ago, if you try to be perfect, you'll end up in a bad situation. Don't try to be perfect, be good. Okay? So, we have an environment where, and we'll jump to the impact map. Okay? Here is the premium impact map. We'll zoom out here, okay? So you can kind of get a good zoom. If you want to zoom in, you could see that. And here is the public impact map, okay? Here's the theme here. Not much has changed in terms of the dynamics of this forecast. The potential for a bust is high. This is a complicated forecast, but if you try to play this too cute and too perfect and just follow the model guidance to the T, you're going to end up basically leaving people uh, unprepared. So I'm keeping the 6 to 10 here with the snow and sleet in this area where we have our strongest lifting. So I'm placing the best potential in this region of having very strong lifting. Now that could be up here. That could be down here. That could be cutting through Long Island up here. Or it could be cutting right over New York City. We're going to have to now cast that to see how that plays out. But what I don't want to do is try to be too perfect and then have to move this around and then catch have people caught unprepared. In this area, we're going to have intense banding and very heavy snow. Because of substance, that leads to more sleet mixing in in Zone 3 where we're going to be in at three to six, you have snow and sleet and rain mix in because you're going to have sinking air, warming pockets of the atmosphere. So in this zone three, you're going to go to snow, to sleet, heavy snow, back to sleet, rain mixed in, over to snow, back and forth because of different waves of lifting in the atmosphere. Down here, including I'm pushing Philadelphia into a, uh, zone four, looking at one to four inches of snow. If you get more snow than ice, you'll be in the higher range. But if you get more mixing, sleet and freezing rain, then you're dealing with an icy mess. Now, the good news is that in Philadelphia itself, because of the urban heat island effect, it's going to be really difficult to pull off freezing rain. But let's just say you're going to have a lot of sleep to deal with too. Because a lot of these signals here, a lot of the buff kit that I was looking at, really shows a lot more sleet than rain. So just be aware of that. 
And then zone five, this is where I push this up a little bit further north to basically go to, um, let's see here, here we are, about a trace to two inches. And again, this isn't going to be like where you're in the mid upper 30s or anything. It's going to be 34 in rain, 35 in rain and sleet. Okay, so not a lot of snow down here because it's just going to be just warm enough, just barely warm enough to have more mixing. But in this area, not everyone is going to get 10 inches of snow. There might be some areas that get completely missed. And what you end up with is less than six inches. You get more into the zone three. But someone in here is going to get hit and hit hard with a very heavy band. And I'm not trying to be perfect here and try to say, well, I know for certain because all the model guides is going up here that definitely all your heavy snow is going to be up here and New York City is going to miss out completely. Yeah, and then what if you're wrong with that band? And you you basically now have mild guidance shifting 12 hours before the storm. How are you going to warn people? I've done this long enough to know that when you're trying to be perfect in these situations, that's when you end up getting hurt. So we're going to stay with our 6 to 10 inches in here. Someone in this area is going to get a very heavy band. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see... Uh, snowfall rates pushing over one inch per hour uh, enhanced snowfall rates as well because snow ratios because uh, along with the strong lifting you have plenty of arctic air so there's certain there's certainly a lot of reasons but i could tell you this in the new york city metro when we take a look at these temperatures here uh, it's not like they get up into uh here we go at 1 a.m look at this gradient here long island you're in the free you're around freezing 32 to 29 but then around newark and new york city you're in the mid 20s so there is going to be a very tight gradient here in terms of the precipitation in terms of the lifting dynamics and so you try not to you, you try to put aside your ego and just say okay complicated situation what's the best way for me to warn people about this setup and then we can now cast it and you can even see here down through central new jersey 34 35 we rapidly jump up to 32. Now you might be wondering, and let me go back here to the impact map here. You might be wondering what's up with this, right? This this cold, this little push southward into Monmouth County. In terms of our geography in central New Jersey, there is a bowl in here, okay? So you have your coastal plain, you have your highlands here, and right in central Monmouth County, and one of the reasons why the land is so fertile around here, you have a dip in the, in the uh, geography here. And cold air tends to like to dip in to central and uh, northern and central Monmouth County. And that cold air sometimes bleeds in down towards uh, northern uh, Ocean County. So that leads to more gradients here. And that's why you also get some pretty intense thunderstorms up here. So I'm going with this dip here as it, it plays in pretty nicely with this whole environment. And again, it plays in pretty nicely here with the intense banding here that we're seeing, intense frontogenesis here that we're seeing in this setup here. So when I see this, this catches my eye. What is the synoptic model trying to do here? And so, you know, when you take a look at all of the mesoscale model guidance here, you know, you got the NAM guidance that goes very warm, has this convective feedback issue here, but even there, it still drives a lot of heavy snowfall into New York City and tries to clearly produce this banding. The HRR guidance, let's see this. We'll go to the 18 hour to get the latest expansion. And again, you don't take this verbatim, but it's colder because it's trying to adjust this banding a little bit further south. Now you have heavier snowfall up here because the snow ratio is higher up here because it's colder air. And then finally, the experimental model guidance that supposedly is going to be replacing the NAM and the HRR it's also trying to drive that colder air further south.
So I'm skeptical of the NAM. And then when we see the new European guidance, I'm not so much worried about the, um, let's see if this loads, it might not load yet. So the 12Z guidance here, here's where everyone, I was getting tons of emails on this. The difference here is simply, it's trying to put the banding up here. But 18Z might not be loaded yet. Let's try that. Here we are. So what does the 18Z do? Well, it keeps on showing the same scenario here where you get your strongest banding up here. Now, if this is off by just a little bit based on all the other dynamics, so I don't want to put ourselves in that position. We know what the overall theme is. Not much has changed on that. I'm going to stick with that. And then we'll go and watch to see where this intense banding sets up over the region and go from there. So that's why I haven't changed all that much. I went a little bit warmer in southeastern Pennsylvania uh, due to if you're going to have strong lifting here, you have to have substance here. And that's going to lead to a lot more mixing. But I, I like the overall theme here. Again, this is a clipper system diving south that enhances the shear and enhances the stretching in the atmosphere enhancing the rising motion in the atmosphere and thus the banding potential and thus a very heavy band of snow that could happen up here it could happen here it can happen down here and we'll keep an eye on it and see how that plays out but again my goal here is not to play perfect it's to play good and to keep you prepared that's it for tonight. I'm going to take a break. I will see you tomorrow morning. In the meantime, stay safe out there.